This time we're going to talk about something called the tonicity. Last time uh, we mentioned that the normal body osmolarity is 300 milliosmoles and so if there is a, a liquid or a fluid that has 300 milliosmoles of particles we can call it isotonic. This means that it has the same tonicity to perform osmosis or to induce osmosis just like the normal body fluids. And at this point the exchange between the two flows will be normal. If this number increases or decreases this causes a change in tonicity. So if it becomes 400 for example then the solution will be hyper tonic and if it's 200 this solution will be hypo tonic and of course the unit is milliosmoles so hypo because it's slower than the normal body osmolarity and hyper because it's higher. And this brings us to the point to ask what kind of particles affect the the exchange or the osmolarity between the different body compartments. In the bigger compartments between the intracellular fluid and the extracellular fluid so we have the particles that are found normally between the two cells as the sodium as we mentioned so sodium is a, a very effective particle that affects the process of osmosis but inside the extracellular fluid compartment we mentioned that is divided into the interstitial fluids and the plasma and the particles between these two compartments move easily except for one kind of particles which is the proteins so between the interstitial fluids and the plasma the proteins play a very important role in the process of um, osmosis or the osmolarity itself and accordingly due to the exchange because of the fluids being isotonic, hypertonic or hypotonic we have a diagram which is called the Darrow-Yannette diagram and the idea behind this diagram is very simple so we have the x-axis with two positive sides because we'll have positive values here and we have the y-axis right there. The y-axis will be for the concentration and the x-axis will be for the volume. And that's why I said there are positive values on both sides because volume can't be negative. And so we will have our two main compartments divided as two-thirds and one-third so this is intracellular fluids and this is extracellular fluids and then when a change happened we will map it on this diagram for example if the volume of the extracellular fluid decreased and the concentration decreased 
this will affect the intracellular fluid like this. So, if the concentration of the extracellular fluid decreased, and the concentration of particles, we mean the concentration of particles, this means th that, like in the drawing that we did before, in the baker, like this, and this is the semi-permeable membrane, and we have our lots of particles here, lots of them, lots of them, and at the point of isotonicity, we'll have the same number of particles here. So if the number of particles here decrease, the water's concentration relatively will be higher in this compartment than this one, so the water will go this way. Definitely what will happen is that the volume of water in this compartment will decrease, and that's what happened here. It shifted towards the zero. And it will be um, put on the other side in the intracellular fluid compartment. So the volume will decrease, it shifts towards the positive extremity, not the zero. And of course, if the volumes of water increase on this side and the number of particles is constant, so the concentration relative to the first state will be lower so the concentration will decrease as we can see so it's a very helpful diagram and in the next time we will uh, show the different results of changes in this diagram according to the injection of different uh, hypertonic hypotonic solutions and so on or different body states and until then I thank you for watching and see you